Hey everyone, so uh, I was just going around tonight boxing up some parts I'm going to send off to e-waste soon. Just some junk stuff I've uh, accumulated over the past little bit. And one of those is this rear display housing from a compact LT Lite 25C. This is the parts unit I got at the swap meet and it has destroyed hinges. Uh, hinge mounts rather. So this isn't going to be recoverable at all. Maybe with enough 3D printing, but I could just find a better condition one, way easier. Um, I don't even have the original bits that fell off. I received it like this. So, this is a junk part. It's going in the trash. And what I'm going to do here, because I'm curious, is I want to see how brittle this is. Because what's curious about these LTE light plastics is you see them with broken hinges all the time. But they don't seem that brittle from working on them. For instance, to get to the hard drive, you have to take the palm rest off, and it's the clips on there are so strong and hard to remove, you'd expect them to break if the plastic was brittle. But they don't. They put up a massive fight. So, how brittle is this plastic? Let's see. Now, for comparison, I have this from a Winbook XP5 that is destroyed. It might look okay at first glance, but there are supposed to be hinge mounts here and here, and it's completely gone and missing. So this is also going to e-waste. And I'm going to see how brittle this is in comparison, because I know this is like brittle plastic disease, because these just fall apart. So, step one here, let's see how much it takes to bust off one of these LCD standoffs here. Well, that's putting up a fight. We're going to do the light first, and then the wind book to see the comparison. Look at that. That's taking it like a champ. These are pretty big mounts, of course, but still. This just isn't giving in. The whole housing is bending. Now it's very notable when you look closer here. This plastic is deforming, not breaking. So this is still good. That still is soft. It's not brittle. Let's try a smaller mount, one for the inverter board. Again, it's just deforming. It's not shattering. Let's try just a whole bit of the housing here. Once again, that just deformed. So that's interesting, because then what causes this to break? Because this didn't happen when they were new. But this plastic is still good. Maybe it's weaker. Maybe it's that these plastic parts are thicker. But I'd expect this to splinter here when I do this. Because I'm applying a lot of force to that. But now it's even springing back. I mean, you're seeing damage, but still. Um, let's see how brittle these... Uh, display latches are, since these always seem to break. And I did try and see if there was a way to remove the latch to fix one of my other ones, but I can't figure out how to get it out. So let's see how tough it is to break one of these. Oh, wow. That is bendy. I'm assuming the, this isn't ABS. It's probably a different type of plastic, but that is very bendy and definitely not brittle because look at that. I bent it almost sideways and it's still intact. Here's a thinner bit of casing right here as well. This is something I would definitely expect to fully splinter if this plastic was brittle. And it's not, it's just deforming. This plastic is still good. I mean, I can't. You don't hear any cracking when I do this. I'll bet I can get that windbook panel clear in half. So, why does this break? Is it really just hinges getting stiff? I mean, what's up with this? Something that's unique to this area of the plastic that gets roached? Because, I mean, the rest of this here seems just as strong. It's not brittle just in this one area. Oh, wow. Well, now there you go. That cracked. That's interesting. That's the first time I've really seen it crack. But still, look at that. That just deformed in half without snapping. 
and it did here too. So I don't think this is brittle either. I just think I put too much pressure on one point. So this, this is junk, but let's see this windbook panel in comparison. This is what brittle plastic looks like. Looking at this mount here, uh, might have a crack, a small crack starting, but it looks intact. Let's see. Splintered. This one. Splintered. All right. Um, let's try a piece of the actual housing itself. There's not as much to play around with here. I mean, I can do this. They literally just explode. Let's try the... Yeah, look at that. This is brittle plastic disease. And you expect display hinges to hold themselves together when a little bit of pressure with pliers just causes it to splinter and fall apart. This is why vintage laptops are dying. It's funny, I mean, the LTE light hinges fail, but the plastics are good. You can just go all the way around. Look at that. Now let's see how much it takes to... Not much at all. Let's see if I can remove the XP5 badge from this. And I mean, is this plastic thinner than the LTEs? Yes but it's not that much thinner. It's not, I mean, there's some flex left, you can see, but not much. And this is creased. I don't need one of these anyway. So this is what we're up against. Plastic that just does this and there's nothing that can be done about it, so. I mean, it'll literally, <laughs> yeah. It's hard to compare thickness because this has no place where we can see how thick this is. But along the side, I mean, that's the same. Along the side is around the back on here and this doesn't do it. There you go, brittle plastic disease visualized. All right, so I just wanna give you a look at the scope of this problem and why vintage laptops are just so doomed if you wanna collect these. They're, they're such a pain because of this problem. And I don't know what the future even looks like. 3D printing's gotta just keep getting better. I mean, it's already getting to the point where you can replicate a lot of this stuff, but not well enough to like get the texture down and get the, the right look. I mean, you can paint it, which makes it a little better, but the strength's not quite there, the size isn't quite there, and the texture isn't there. So when, as long as that continues improving and you can more easily 3D scan these parts to make CAD models and stuff like that, I think in the long run, we'll be able to inexpensively produce new cases for these. But right now, I just gotta give you a, a, a look at the scope of this problem because I showed you how these LTE lights aren't brittle, um, but these are the exception to the norm. Um, these machines here, these are my alpha tops. These are all brittle plastic disease, which is they are as brittle or close to as brittle as that wind book. That is brittle plastic disease, as we call it. I think TechNet coined that term, although it's probably been used before him, but that's where I got it from. Um, and these have it. This is a brother laptop, although it's just a rebadged Veridata. This has it. These LT lights are okay. The Elites are okay. The 5000s, I think, are okay. This CTX EasyBook has it bad. The XPIs seem to be in the middle. I'm not quite sure how much of it is good design, keeping them from all breaking, and how much of it is plastic quality. Um, Latitude LM, brittle. Latitude CPI, very brittle. Latitude CS, very brittle. These are newer, they're okay, but I think they're just starting. 
because like these Inspire on 8000 series, these are starting to get the hinge cracks. Mine has just started on one side. And these are all too new. Um, Apple laptops, PowerBook 100 series, these are okay, except the 150. The 150 is an exception. This is brittle plastic disease because it was made by Acer. Um, but all the other 100 series, these aren't brittle. The reason the hinges fail is because the plastic shrinks slightly with age. Um, and they can't shrink around brass screw threads, so they crack. But besides the standoffs, nothing cracks on these. They're okay. PowerBook 500 series, these are more like brittle. I don't think they're that bad, but they're brittle. And then PowerBook 5300, brittle. Um, 1400, brittle. 3400, mine's actually better than most, but I think these have the problem. Um, the iBook clamshells are starting to get brittle. The G3s, I think, are starting to get brittle. They're not, none of these are that bad yet, but I think they're starting. Um, let's go down here. This is an Epson laptop. It's a rebadged Compal. These are brittle, I think. The Compal plastic all is from this time, but these are really well built, so they're okay. This gateway here, the ColorBook 2, this one is actually, I think, I might eat my words on that later, but I think this plastic is still good because the hinge mounts aren't very well designed on these, and yet these don't seem to break. So th th these are made by Sotec, and they were made in Japan and might use different plastics. I don't know. Um, these are too new. This K-Pock is right here. This thing is definitely probably starting to get brittle. It can still take a bit of flex right now, but I'm expecting I'll run into hinge issues pretty soon. This Nantan, hard to tell because all of the plastic's so thick and it's so old. It's probably okay because the thing about brittle plastic disease is it seemed to have started in 92 thereabouts and then got a bit more widespread in 1993. And then by 94, most of the laptops from then, pretty much all of them with a few exceptions, have the issue. But, so if you have like a 1990 like this is, it's probably okay. Um, same here, this is an NEC Ultralay SL25C. These are still good, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's an early 92. But then NEC's uh, machine, just a few months later, the Ultralight Versa, which looks like this later Versa here, which is very brittle. Just a few months later, the gray ver Ultralight Versa plastic is extremely brittle. So something changed between this plastic and the next gen plastic that they used. Uh, this Samsung's okay, but it's hard to tell because um, obviously I'm not gonna try taking pliers to it and these are built like tanks. So it's hard to tell if it's brittle, brittle or not. The think pads are generally, they generally used better plastic. There's a few exceptions to this. And of course they're built very well. Um, so it's hard to tell how much of it is brittle and how much isn't. This PS Note 425, they're brittle. <laughs> um, but then these machines here, these ThinkPads, they're all okay. They don't have hinge failures, but it's hard to tell if it's plastics or good design. Um, the ThinkPad I series, these are very brittle because they're Acer. Um, and also, I don't own one of these, but the ThinkPad 365 uh, laptops, those are very brittle and have hinge issues. And so do the original ThinkPads, the 700 and the, and the 700C and the 720C. Those have bad hinge failure. Um, so, yep. Uh, this is a newer one. This is a ThinkPad G40. This is starting to get brittle. These are starting to get stress cracking issues near the hinges. This is shipping damage right here. But I'm sure the plastic quality didn't help. This is a Quanta. Quanta made this. It's a custom design, that's what Quanta mostly does. Um, but this is not IBM in-house, so that might mean different plastics. The Toshiba machines, I don't own many of these, but they're interesting. Some of them are really, really brittle, like this Tekra 500. This is extremely brittle. Um, on the other hand, this is a Satellite Pro 430 CDT. These are okay, seemingly. Um, but again, hard to tell if it's good design or uh, good plastics. Now, I just, from what I know about the Toshibas, their plastic quality seemed to run into issues in 95, and then those machines on for a few years are brittle. 
with a few exceptions, like this is a 96 and it's okay. Um, but the like the, the 94 Toshibas, like the T4800, T4850, T4900, those are still good. Uh, Tech Knight tested the plastic on one of those and they're not brittle, they're like the LTE. Um, but then in 95, when the machines in this chassis started to come out, some of the 486 ones from the T2000 series that were in the same chassis, um, they're extremely brittle. So something changed from 94 to 95 in Toshiba's plastic, right? So wind books, right? These were all made by different companies. So we have Jetta, ASE, ASE, Quanta, Twinhead, Alpha Top, ECS, ECS. They're all different companies. All of these are brittle through to Twinhead. I think this Alpha Top here is starting to get brittle, green 720. Um, and then the ECS machines, this one, hard to tell because the display cover is metal. Um, this one, the green 732, AKA the Winbook J4, um, this is brittle. The hinge mounts on mine blew out and it seems to be a common problem. So these are starting to get brittle and this is from 2002, right? And then finally, last but not least, Zenith Data Systems. This one's in-house, sort of. I think Sanyo made these, but it's a custom design. Again, Sanyo, Japanese plastic. Um, these are okay still. This is a Compaw, the Zenote MX, extremely brittle. <laughs> So, and again, this is a 93 machine. This is a 95 machine. It's the date has to do with it. Although Sanyo's plastic seem to have stayed good because Sanyo also made the Micron Transport, the first couple Micron laptops, the, tran the Millennia Transport, the Transport XPE, and the XKE. Um, and those seem to have good plastics and they're right in that era. They're like 96 to 98. So... What does this all mean? What does this all mean? Well, it means that you have to be ready to do a lot of epoxying, a lot of hinge fixing, and a lot of work if you want to collect vintage laptops. Because if you pull out a lot of these machines, like this alpha top here, look at that. This is JB Weld plastic bonder because it cracked here, right? So, you got to be ready to do this. And a lot of my laptops are starting to look like this. Like this one's been epoxied. This one might need it soon, but it's okay. Uh, this one needed it. The LT lights all need it because they, for some reason, still have hinge trouble, even though the plastics are good. And, they, and it just goes on. A bunch of these have it. So, you know, it's worth it to me because I just have so much fun fixing and using these machines. I, I just love vintage laptops. But, man, like... Look at my PowerBook 150, man. This is just sad. This is just sad right here. What I've needed to do, right? Because it just completely splits. It's bad. But, hey, um, that's all for this video. I might do a video in the future going over um, what exactly my methods are for dealing with this brittle plastic. Because um, I touched on it a bit here, but I have specific tricks for specific failures and specific products I use. So I might do a video going over that. But for now, I'll see everyone later. Lower effort video, but I need to get something out. So, hey, I'll see everyone next time.